this idea when I was still in high school that I would study the human body really hard and then apply it in sport. I thought that there was an opportunity to bring a much more precise and data-driven approach to understanding athletes, understanding their physical systems, and then optimizing their systems. I think this integration of sports science, of technology, with the actual training is essential. There have been smart people in physiology and biomechanics that are doing smart things. And there's what happens in sport. And they generally don't connect. They need to connect. And so our model is to have one foot deeply in the science, but also one foot clearly in the day-to-day -day rubber meets the road, let's go sweat and bleed and work hard. When an athlete shows up, we'll spend a couple hours having them do things that happen in their sport. If we have an NBA player in, we have them jumping and second jumps and cutting and sliding and have them do them fast and explosive. We expect efforts that are going to be, you know, 95% plus what they can derive. And I think one of the carrots is that they know that a lot of the best athletes in each of their sports have already been through here. So that's our data context. We're asking amazingly detailed questions about how they do it. What systems they use, how much force is going through their knees versus their hips, what about their right side versus their left side. We're looking at peak forces when athletes land. Nobody talks to them about how your foot should interact with the ground, but it turns out two athletes coming down from the same height can completely change how forces are transmitted through their bodies. If these systems we're assessing don't have correlations on court, on field, then there's no reason to do this assessment. We try to make our programs as individualized as possible. And that comes from using our sort of our technology, whether that be force plates or 3D motion capture. We can compare it to positional peers or athletes in their age category, whatever it may be. But ultimately, there will still be some subjective viewpoints of how we actually write the program. We also use our technologies to look at sort of the athlete's fatigue and the athlete's sort of current acute physical state where they're at as well, so we can change the program accordingly. It's very difficult to bring those two pieces together. To take this data, understand the highest yield pieces of that data, and then use it to generate actionable prescriptive models. You need a competence on both sides, on the objective uh, data development and technology side, as well as the pure training uh, athlete development side. I think that the biggest challenge early on was the fact that there wasn't a sports science infrastructure. Teams, strength coaches, they're not used to having these granular perspectives on their athletes. They just want them working hard. As long as they're working up a sweat, you know, things are good. The athletes still need to sweat. They need to work hard. But if we can do this really, really smartly, then we're going to optimize careers. There's no doubt about it. Every injury that an athlete develops, other than the, the big traumatic injuries, they telegraph themselves in subtle ways or not such subtle ways. There's a reason that a 25-year-old NBA player has no cartilage on the medial aspect of his left knee. It didn't come out of nowhere. But up until now, there wasn't a real vigilant effort to understand those signals before that injury was developed. Generally what happens is an athlete just plays until he can't play anymore and the thing hurts too much and then it gets worked up. You go see an orthopedist, you get images, and you find out what's going on with it structurally. And we don't have all the answers, not even close, but uh, we have some of the answers and I think we're asking all the right questions and we're the first group to have the data to be able to ask those questions. When you have athletes that will come back year after year, you can really start to see exactly those changes over time. So someone like Dylan Axelrod will be here for four months. We can assess him three to four times during that time and we can really change the program accordingly. It's our responsibility to make the athlete's life better with the data we collected. And that means being smarter about how we train him. It means not doing something we would have done if we didn't have this insight into how he works. And it means using this data to enhance his career as he goes forward. You know, we're working in this space with this objective assessment of athletes and all the data we have on athletes that hasn't existed before. What we're doing is damn fun and exciting.